Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Ryzen 7 3800X. Now, the 3800X, I haven't seen much for reviews, so I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and review one. We've seen a lot of people doing comparisons between the 3700X and the 3900X, and rightfully so. We've also seen some 3600s and 3600X reviews uh, in the mix there as well, but not a lot on the 3800X. Now, the reason why I think the 3800X is interesting, and I'm not saying this is a good or bad way, but the 3800X is very similar, obviously, to the 3700X. They both are 8-core, 12, or 16-thread processors, excuse me. And then the biggest difference between the two of them is that the 3800X has a TDP of 105 watts, which is quite a bit higher than, I believe, the 65 watt of the 3700X. It also has a higher uh, boost frequency and base frequency over the 3700X as well. And what makes all this interesting is, yes, it does cost about $70 more, so are those differences worth it? But what it also has in some regards is we've seen so far not a lot of amazing overclocking support on the new 3000 series Ryzen chips. Now, let them do whatever they do just out of the box seems to be kind of the best bet, but you can get in there and you can overclock and change some things up, but you're not seeing huge gains like you might expect um, when we saw, you know, 2000 series or if you were on an Intel platform. So maybe going with the 3800X, since it has that higher base and boost frequency over the 3700X, maybe for $70, that is worth it. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the 3800X. We will be comparing it against a 2600 from the previous generation. Now, the reason I've chosen that processor, well, it's the processor that I'm upgrading from, and I think it's actually a little bit more of a realistic upgrade path. A lot of people I don't personally think would have uh, either a 2600 and jump to a 3600, or have a 2700X from the last gen and jump to a 3700X. It just doesn't seem like that's that much of a difference for you to jump up. Now, of course, IPC is gonna be better coming to the new generation, and overall it will be a better chip, but you would usually expect to jump also maybe some cores and some threads. If you had a 2700X last generation, maybe you're looking at 3900x if you had a 2600 maybe a 37 or 3800x is where you'd be looking to go so you get a few more cores and a few more threads so that's what our comparison will be we can kind of see how things kind of go if this is kind of an upgrade path that you would be looking to take and we can look at the performance gains and differences in not only synthetics but also game tests at both 1080p and at 1440p because that is what I game on. Um, so we'll be able to run both of those tests. Now, the other thing that I think will be maybe more telling about my tests compared to maybe other reviewers are um, a lot of other reviewers have really, really high end test benches and that's awesome to see what all these chips can do. But if you're more on a realistic level, um, a lot of those other tests from other reviewers are reviewing with 2080 Ti's. Not everybody has a 2080 Ti and honestly, if you're pairing up a $1,200 um, graphics card, to maybe a mid-range Ryzen. Now, obviously, this isn't as mid-range. This is closer to the high end. But if you're pairing that with mid-range, a lot of people don't typically do that. Now, we can see what we can get out of our uh, CPUs that way with a high-end card, but maybe we test it with a mid-range card, which is what I have, and we can see realistically what you can expect from your machine's performance. So what we will be testing with is a 1070 8 gig um, GTX card. So something very mid-range at the moment. Um, starting to be a little bit older, but still mid-range. And then we can see what all we can expect with performance gains, not only, uh, and, and the performance differences from the 26 to the 3800X. So should be an interesting test. Um, kind of interested to see what all pans out from this and what we can kind of see what happens when you pair certain things together and where limitations come in, not only for the CPU, between both of them, but also hardware side, maybe the graphics card, maybe we're running into memory issues, who knows? We'll run into that and we'll discuss it as we go over those tests. But for now, let's jump in and see just what the test bench itself is right off the bat. All right, so first thing, let's go over the test bench. Of course, we're using the 2600 Ryzen 5 and we're using the new Ryzen 7 3800X. We have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. We're using two 8 gig sticks of Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB memory at 3200 megahertz on both platforms. We are going to be loading everything from a 512 gigabyte Samsung 960 Pro. All of our games, though, are on a Samsung 850 Evo. The motherboard we're using for this test is the Asus ROG Strix X470i uh, gaming motherboard. We just did a simple BIOS update on that, so it would be compatible with our Ryzen 7 3800X. And then, of course, our power supply is an SF600 Corsair 600 watt power supply. 
Let's start things off with some synthetic tests. We started off with Cinebench's R20 test. The Ryzen 7 3800X scored a 4816 for the multi-core performance test, and the Ryzen 5 2600 scored a 2601. That's a performance difference of 59%, so actually quite the difference. Now, of course, we have more cores and threads on the Ryzen 3800X, but overall, quite the performance gain. And then looking at the single core performance, we saw a score of 496 on the 3800X and a score of 384 on the 2600, a performance difference of 25%. So another pretty good gain on the single core performance. Next, we jumped into Firestrike. The Ryzen 7 3800X came out with a very large physics uh, score over the 2600 because that's based more on the CPU. Um, we saw 24,148 against the 2600's 16,575. That's a performance difference of 37%. Graphics scores were actually quite similar, and actually the edge went to the 2600, but I'd actually say that that is within the margin of error. And then if we take a look at the overall combined scores, um, we had a 15,980 for the 3800X and a 14,700 for the Ryzen 5, a percent difference of about 8.3%. Jumping into our game tests, first off, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider on very high at 1080p. Now, overall, this is one of our weirder test results that we got. The Ryzen 7 3800X only outperformed on average FPS of 1. But if you look at the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows, um, overall, you can see that we're seeing more consistency on the 3800X. Um, less dropped frames overall and kind of a more consistent playthrough. Obviously, the average overall um, FPS between the two is only about a 1%. So not a big difference on Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. Taking a look at the Rise of the Tomb Raider this time at 1440p on very high, it's again a very similar story. Um, I think the big issue we are also running into, so we have a 1% gain overall, but we're seeing that we're running into a bottleneck limitation most likely on our GPU as even the 1% lows and 0.1% are a lot closer together. So we're running into most likely a GPU constraint at this point since we are less CPU dependent. Next, we're going to move things on to the Division 2 at 1080p on medium settings. We had the Ryzen 7 perform at an average of 113 FPS, while the Ryzen 5 2600 performed at an average of 98. Again, we can see that the 1% lows and the 0.1% are also a bit higher on the 3800X, so we have more consistency in our games. Um, the average FPS difference overall is about a 14% gain, so I'd say a pretty solid performance improvement um, over the previous generation. Moving on to the division at 1440p, again, we do see a performance difference at 83 average FPS on the 3800X and 74 FPS average on the 2600. Another performance difference of about 11.5%, so very similar. So a little bit less um, GPU dependent in this game. We're still seeing some performance actually moving up to the current generation of Ryzen, it would appear. Um, again, with the 1% lows, a little bit better on the 3800X and the 0.1% lows, um, actually the same. So it might be the game a little bit and some more GPU limitations, very, uh, very consistent at least with those 0.1% percent lows. But overall, another, you know, decent gain for the 3800X. Next, we're going to be moving on to PUBG uh, at 1080p on low, but with ultra post processing. So I'm using the, the specific settings I use for in-game, which is mostly low on things, textures at medium, and post-processing on ultra, which is what you want. Um, as we can see, at 1080p, we had 177 average FPS on the 3800X and an average of 163 FPS on the Ryzen 5 2600. Now, the big telling difference here um, is that we can see that the 1% lows are a bit higher for the 3800X as well as those 0.1% lows. We had a very low score on the 2600 at 47. So, Overall, a lot more consistency. Um, and as I've been playing this game more and more on my 3800X, I will say the average FPS overall feels way higher with a lot smoother of a frame rate. Overall, between these two averages, we see a 8% uh, difference in performance, so an 8% gain on the 3800X. But if you look and you compare those 1% and those 0.1%, quite, quite a good jump um, for consistency and less uh, dropped frames overall. 
A similar story is happening at, for PUBG at 1440p. We have a very similar average FPS between the two of them, only one FPS apart, but we have our 1% lows and our 0.1%s, um, obviously a little bit higher on the 3800X, making a, a little bit smoother performance um, gameplay as, as this, uh, you know, as you play the title. And I'll say overall, it feels much smoother and it seems to be at a higher FPS. I don't know if this test doesn't show more of that. Obviously, we are again running into a little bit more of a GPU limitation at a higher resolution since we're seeing a very similar similar um, uh, FPS result number, but you know, only a, a quote unquote 1% performance difference on the average, but we're seeing quite a larger uh, margin on those 1% and those 0.1% lows. And finally, we're going to take a look at Dirt Rally at 1080p with a MSAA settings at times two. The Ryzen 7 3800X averaged 169, while the 2600 averaged 139 FPS. Um, now, again, we are seeing those 1% and those 0.1% having quite a difference. So your overall gameplay experience, smoother, less frame rate drops as low. So you're gonna have a better gaming experience. That's also a uh, performance difference of about 19.5% between the 2600 and the 3800X. So another uh, respectable gain overall on the CPU at 1080p. And then looking at Dirt Rally at 1440p, we can see another similar story that has kind of been going on the whole time. We're running into a GPU limitation and not so much a CPU limitation, it would seem. So 125 average FPS on the 3800X and only one less on the 2600. But we do have those 1% lows and those 0.1% a little bit higher, which is gonna add, um, kind of just add up to be a better gaming experience overall. So what's the takeaway from all of this information? Well, one of the big takeaways for me is that my GPU at 1440p is mostly the bottleneck, but I am gaining more consistency with a 3800X with those 1% and 0.1% lows not being as apparent as they were on the 2600. So that's a nice gain for me. Now, obviously at 1080p, we could see there is a little bit of an FPS gain, um, on those games, which is really nice if you are playing at 1080p. And then of course, synthetic tests for the 3800X are very, very good. We could see a really large difference between a 2600 and a 3800X in Cinebench, and especially in Firestrike when you're looking at that physics score. So a really big gain. Now obviously, yes, the 3800X, it has a higher boost clock and a higher base clock, and it has more cores and threads but the difference gained for just those things was really big. So um, that's been always a strong suit for Ryzen is that multi-core performance. That's gonna help me when I am rendering videos. It's gonna export them quicker. So far, just a little bit I've done. I didn't do any tests in this video, but so far what I've seen, a lot faster renders. We're gonna have much better streaming experiences with more cores and more threads. And the big thing on the streaming side is for me, I'm not expecting to see as many FPS drops on my side when I'm playing games with a little bit more consistency in our game from what we can see at that 1440p. So overall, that'll help me out while I am streaming um, slightly more demanding games. So I'm really excited about that. Now, of course, depending on what CPU you have right now, and depending on which direction you maybe wanna go with your upgrade, the 3000 series may or may not make sense. If you're coming from a 2700X and you don't really feel like jumping to a 3900X, I don't really think a 3700X or a 3800X is gonna be an enormous difference for you. You're gonna have the same cores and threads but you're gonna get better you know, IPC, um, single core performance on your new 30, uh, 3000 series processors. But is that gonna be a big enough performance difference for the cost? You know, that kinda of depends on you. And you know, realistically, I like to think that this is more of a realistic upgrade path for someone going from a 2600 to a 3800X or maybe a 3700X and of course a 3900X. But I don't expect anyone to kinda of jump the exact same processor, just get the newer version. Um, since there's no big core uh, and thread difference on those, you usually wanna jump up a step to actually see a really big uh, performance boost, uh, not only on potentially on the game side of things, but also then also other tasks that might use more cores and more threads. Of course, Intel still is a very compelling offering if you are still going to be playing just games. But if you wanna stream, you wanna do some content creation, seems like the Ryzen series is now kind of a pretty smart place to be. So I'm excited about it in my rig. Um, and then of course, you know, overall support, you know, you get the cooler that is, uh, comes in the box with the Ryzen. You don't really get that with those K-series processors from Intel. Um, boards seem to be a little bit more expensive. 
you can pair it as I have in this video with a X470 motherboard. Um, so if you have an existing motherboard or you want to pick up one that's going maybe on sale, it's getting a little bit cheaper now that the X570 motherboards are out, you can save some money there too as well. So Ryzen might be even more appealing in that regard as well. So interested to know what processor you're currently running and if you are thinking about jumping to a 3000 series Ryzen processor, which one you would go for. And if you think there's a big difference maybe between the 3700X and the 3800X. Of course, the scores I've seen on the 3700X so far puts it a little bit behind the 3800X, but they have the same cores and threads, so the performance differences aren't enormous, and I wouldn't expect them to be because they're playing with very similar um, base stats. Of course, higher boost clock and higher base clock, and then, of course, that TDP. Now, maybe that will come into play later um, with Ryzen uh, precision overclocking and the Ryzen master software. Maybe it can get a little bit more out of that, sending a little bit more power through the actual processor. That's more stuff that we could test in the future or that we'll see other people test potentially too. But so far, the 3800X seems to be a solid player in the lineup. It does cost a little bit more than the 3700X, but they all have their places. Like I said, let me know what processor you have and if you plan on upgrading. Don't forget to turn the bell on for notifications and subscribe if you have not already and then join uh, our Discord down below in the description too if you want to uh, chat with others about not only tech stuff but about games as well and you'll maybe catch me in there too chatting with all the people. So other than that, thanks for checking out the video and I'll see all of you guys in the next one.